As a continuation to the series that I started called Food for Thought, I figured a great question to cover was the composition of Earth's most primordial ocean. Was it composed of freshwater or saltwater? Even though it's a simple question, it's one that's worth asking, as the answer to it provides yet another example of the many evolutions that our planet has undergone throughout the eons. When Earth was in its most primordial state, during the Hadean Eon, some 4.5 billion years ago, it was little more than a fiery hellhole. Volcanic eruptions and asteroid impacts were the norm back then. But it didn't take too long for things to start to change, and for our planet to begin its transition into the form we know today. And it did so fairly rapidly, in all honesty. In its first iteration, Earth hosted a massive freshwater ocean. Whilst it's impossible to really know with complete accuracy, it's thought that the very first oceans on our planet began their life some 4.5 billion years ago, which is surprisingly quick after the birth of the planet. But rather unsurprisingly, the filling of the oceans began with rains. Water would accumulate over time, and that would eventuate into massive freshwater oceans that spanned the vast stretches of the planet. Earth was so young back then, that time hadn't yet worn it to the point that the oceans became salty and cynical about life. And during these early 0.5 billion years, continental land was just beginning to take shape. Craddens in Western Australia, Antarctica, Africa, and Canada, to name only a few, began their formation at this point in time, beginning as granitic intrusions and as volcanic eruptions. But where did all this salt come from? It's not hard to understand that rains more or less filled the massive oceanic bowls that make up our planet. But what made it salty at a time when there is no internet or social media? After all, 97% of all water on Earth is saline, so there's a lot of saltiness on our planet. By some estimates, if the salt in the ocean could be removed and spread evenly over the Earth's land surface, it would form a layer more than 166 meters or 500 feet thick with a height of a 40-story office building. But the answer to this is rather simple. Salt in the ocean comes from the rocks on land. But how? Well, when rain falls, it contains dissolved carbon dioxide from the surrounding air, altering the pH of the water, making it slightly acidic as a result of this, due to carbonic acid. The erosion that then takes place after millions of years of rainfall physically erodes the rock and the acids literally chemically break it down, carrying salt and minerals in a dissolved state known as ions. These ions are then carried by streams and rivers out to the ocean, where many of them actually get consumed by organisms that are living in the ocean, removing it from the water, whilst others accumulate. The two ions in particular that are most abundant in seawater are chloride and, unsurprisingly, sodium. These two make up over 90% of all the dissolved ions that can be found in ocean water. But it's not just the erosion of rocks on continental land that's responsible for the salt content found in the sea. Hydrothermal vents in oceanic ridges also work to contribute dissolved minerals to the oceans. The reason for this is because these vents release hot seawater that has dissolved some of the minerals from the crust. And whilst these vents may seem like they are little more than a blip in the grand scheme of things, it's estimated that the entire volume of the world's oceans could circulate through hydrothermal vent systems every 10 to 20 million years, which is absolutely mind-blowing to me. And the very discovery of these vents is actually a relatively new one, with it occurring only a few decades ago. And these vents are crucial for many things, from supporting life at the bottom of the deep sea to the release of valuable minerals such as gold, lead, silver, and copper, to name a few. And it's because of this that mining companies have set their sights on extinct hydrothermal vent systems to conduct deep sea mining. Which sounds great in theory, but the practicality of doing this in a safe and financially beneficial way is difficult to say the least. Not to mention the fact that this type of mining would probably damage the environment more than any surface mining ever could. And these deep sea biomes are incredibly fragile. With them hosting an abundance of life, some of which we've never even seen up to this day. It just doesn't seem worth it, in my opinion, when we have all these tasty quartzies that'll give us some good AU, even if the yields are less, right here on dry land. It fascinates me to think that once upon a time, a massive freshwater ocean stretched from pole to pole. The transitions that occur on our planet 
are truly astonishing to look back at. It's from the smallest things like the simple erosion of rocks that the largest things can occur, like the altering of the salinity across every ocean on our planet, changing it from fresh to salt water over the many billions of years that erosion occurred, showing how simple rocks have a profound impact. Thanks for watching.